Oh, baby. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest uh, Tuesday mornings out there in your good old cryptocurrency life. Bitcoin having a massive, massive girthy green deal to move to the upside. And we got plenty to talk about today. So without further ado, let's get into the live scene. As always, wish you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. And let's go see what we got going on right here, right now. As Bitcoin has had a monstrous move, about a $1,000 move from 4100 to 5100 essentially. And I know a lot of people are getting very excited about this right now, and for good reason. I mean, the breakout out of 4,200 was a very tradable event. Of course, uh, Bitcoin exploding, absolutely shattering the measure move from this ascending triangle right here and working its way even higher, getting all the liquidations that it could ever get all the way up to this uh, blue 377 exponential moving average right here at uh, 5200, which is also going to line up with the monthly 21 exponential. But we'll, get, we'll have more on that later. For right now, I do want to cover the more bullish side of this. And of course, it goes without saying that I actually have kept open my long. Uh, my trigger for closing that was as long as we are above as long as we were above uh, 4100, I was going to keep it open. We, we uh, Bitcoin maintained above 4100 and then exploded uh, right as I was waking up. Actually, I completely missed the move to 5200 sadly so I was not able to I would I would have liked to have closed a lot of my long right around there um, on both my streamer account and my main account which I will be trading today so I do have to keep that open and, and have my eyes on it on my other screen but <clears throat> But there are a few big things to be aware of on now the higher time frame, uh, the, the higher time frame look as Bitcoin is actually currently living above as we take everything off the purple 200 exponential and the what is this a reddish or pinkish uh, uh, the, the pink 200 some moon average in the, in the purple 200 exponential moving average, which as long as Bitcoin is above there, I would consider that something new is perhaps happening. So here's the thing. Today's close is going to be absolutely critical. As you'll notice, Bitcoin has not been able to close above both these moving averages since essentially, you know, March of last year uh, when Bitcoin was heading down from 12,000 on that first massive, massive drawdown. So, you know, ever since then, Bitcoin has been actually finding its tops right around the 200 moving average and uh, a little bit less so around the 200 exponential moving average. But now they're both kind of aligned with each other. And my big point is that if we are actually able to close above them today, that would be a change of behavior on it on something that I put a shit ton of weight on, uh, to put it to put it quite quite bluntly. So we do see that coming in right around about forty six hundred. Of course, there's a lot of hours left in the day, and Bitcoin's already about five hundred dollars off of the highs, which is not the best sign to be quite uh, to be quite serious. Um, you know, selling off this aggressively from a major exponential is you know, typically warranted, but as far as this whole pump, you know, putting this in perspective, we've already given up, um, oh, oh my God, that was 20, 26% pump right there. Yeah, we've given up um, about 10% of that pump already. So giving up half, not necessarily the best look on that, but it's really gonna depend on where we actually close the day out. If you look at the lower time frames, the hourly did close with a massive wick to the upside, which would be indicative of some pretty nice selling. You do see massive volume being thrown down on this as well. In fact, the biggest volume on this run. So I do believe that we have found a local top of of course, this is, you know, this the, the, uh, this information coming in or me recording this video about a couple hours after this actually happened, you know, obviously not too, not too helpful right now. But I would be looking for this to come back down and test supports at the very least test the 200 exponential 200 simple. So if I am looking for a scalp short, that's what we're looking towards another, you know, down to about 4,600. So from here, it'd be about a hundred dollar move. Not bad. Uh, but I would imagine that after a major massive move like this, you are going to spend some time or Bitcoin's going to spend some time at the very least trying to go sideways here. Uh, if it immediately sold off, that would be uh incredibly bad but I don't believe that that's going to happen and uh, and more importantly to kind of describe what I'll be doing for for the rest of my long on my main account and my stream account is I'm holding this as long as we are you know if we can close above the 200 exponential and 200 simple today then I will hold that for a much longer term if we close below then I will close it I will close both of them and actually probably put on I'll probably put on some sort of a put spread to the downside um, just because we actually do have a lot of competing narratives going on right now on the higher time frames. Now, the lower time frames, the low and medium time frames have been bullish ever since that we started creating this ascending triangle right here, which I hope that I was very clear in stating. Um, as you know, that was kind of the impetus for me taking my own long, and uh, which I've been showing for the past week. And then, well, now we're just kind of seeing it explode right now. This is exactly the volume that I want to see on a formation like this getting resolved. You do see this nice orderly drop from volume, then boom, massive up right over here. That's exactly what we spoke about yesterday night that if Bitcoin were to take out this 41 uh, 30 ish level then <clears throat> it on 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 good volume that was going to be the that uh, that was going to be the signal so to speak uh, perhaps it's even better to look at this on a lower time frame the lower time frames doing significant amounts of volume that we really haven't seen in in months actually you can see over here uh, this four hour dildo sorry three hour dildo let's actually go to a four hour 
this four hour dildo, which we're still working on right now, still 48 minutes to go, has done has done almost 2 billion in volume on BitMEX Co, which is quite significant. Uh, we really haven't seen that amount of volume being thrown down since, I mean, since uh, since the big breakdown of 6,000 right over here. So to me, that actually is quite powerful. But again, it really depends on where we end this next daily. If we can end it above the 200, uh, simple and 200 exponential, and then this run probably gets at the very least another test of 5,000, and uh, and then we could talk about you know what would what would actually switch me to being to, to to being bullish overall in the overall picture right now, uh, as of the last few weeks on the lower time frames had to be bullish on the medium time frames had to be neutral. Now I'd say on the medium time frames they would be bullish as long as we are above this 4,100 level above the 200 exponential on the weekly to kind of relate these uh, these ideas once again because it's very 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 important to understand the differential between all these different time frames, the low time frames, the medium time frames, the high in the macro time frames, which the low time frames, you know, ever since we put in that ascending triangle was looking good. Um, the medium time frames, the medium to high time frames right here, if we can close above the 200 exponential, that will that will ins that will likely incite some more continuation. But here's the thing. It's, got, it's a long week to go left. Um, it's a long week to go left. I'd imagine that we probably are going to close above this 200 exponential moving average right here, this proof of moving average that uh, has been holding Bitcoin back ever since um, late uh, late November right over here. So to me, that is very important because Bitcoin is not, you know, not only has a chance to change around the daily and do something that we haven't done in well over a year, but also get out of this area, this more aggressive uh, downtrending area um, by closing this next weekly above the 200 exponential. But of course, the weekly has a lot, you know, a lot more time to go on it. Uh, but that would, you you know, from a higher time frame perspective, that would be indicative of some more upside to come, uh, perhaps another test in the 5000s if that were to happen. So for right now, for right now, it's not gonna be too, you know, it's not gonna be too relevant just because, uh, well, you know, we have to wait until Sunday at 8pm Eastern time for the next weekly to actually come about to populate. So for right now, um, going to be more of a waiting game. But I would ha I would just keep that cognizant in the back of my mind, uh, as you know, as you know, as the week expires, there's going to be more and more opportunities with that. So <clears throat> going back onto the lower time frames, I want to go back to the hourly. You know, hourly does look like he's going to try to, at the very least, perhaps flag out this area. Yeah, the the hourly did have a pretty nasty close with this massive wick to the upside, but I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't mind if we actually pop back up, test forty eight, maybe even forty nine hundred, and uh, and then play the consolidation out. However, here's the big thing though: if this thing does come back down, um, which after looking at an hourly like this, I would like to see a retest of the daily two hundred uh, simple and two hundred exponential. That's exactly where I want to see support come in. And this is, you know, very, 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 very likely to be tested. Um, you know, if it gets tested today, I'd say that that is. Mm, I don't want to put I don't want to put words on it, but what I would say is that uh, I would be looking to buy it on first pass probably, but it's it also offers up a pretty easy you know pretty easy risk reward trade, and of course this is not you know I'm kind of speaking out of turn here because keep in mind my perspective is I'm already in a trade I've been in a trade for the past week uh, long from thirty nine thirty down around here I'm just using this to manage this trade so if we close above I hold it if we close below I close and of course it's not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor blah 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 go fuck yourself as a seat unless you want to approve the bitcoin etf daddy back gonna come in and save this bitch but hmm, um you know overall i do want to keep you know i do want to keep this a little bit more tempered because i understand that everyone's getting very excited that we just had a thousand dollar move up which you should be that warrants excitement absolutely but keep in mind the higher time frames here we do have the daily stokes are getting quite tired right as we approach the 200 simple and 200 exponential which has been which has been you know uh resisting price action for you know well over a year now technically I'm um, going all the way back to March of 2018. Not only that, but we do see on the higher time frames when we go to the weekly, uh, especially let's yeah, we're on Bitstamp right now. We do see that that we do that we basically had a test of the 50 exponential as the 50 and the 89 cross right over here, which are gaining divergence away from each other, which would suggest that the overall greater trend is actually strengthening to the downside. Not only that, but we've been speaking about this for quite some time. The monthly, the monthly. The monthly 21 exponential and 10 some moon average has been now tested. And this is exactly what we spoke about yesterday. Or sorry, not about yesterday, but over the last, uh, you know, over the last month when we were watching this last month close above the 50 exponential, which I hope that I've been extremely extremely clear with saying as, uh, you know, as soon as we closed last month, which was March above this green 50 exponential moving average, which we had been living below for the past three months, which was broken for the first time in Bitcoin's history in December of last year. We broke that on last month's closure on, I guess that, well, I guess that was yesterday, technically speaking. Um, when did it get set in stone? Yeah, yesterday, technically. Um, and then, I mean, uh, again, I did not, 
when when I talk about these ideas, I don't want to take credit for something that is not like I, I don't I don't want to make it sound like I knew that this was going to happen or anything like that. No, the speed at which that this the speed at which this happened. That's something that is just kind of devoid from technical analysis. You can have some ideas based on some things, but they're you know it's it's not very reliable in my experience. What we could, what we did say though was, hey, the second that you close that last monthly deal above the 50 exponential, you're likely to have a test deeper into the 4,000s. Um, in fact, this one coming all the way up to test of the 21 exponential formally. That, <clears throat> you know, that happened really fucking fast. So again, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to, I, I, I don't want to incite that. You know, that was that that was like a part of the plan. No, of course not. When it comes down to timing, like actual looking at the move coming up, that is something that again is more reliable in my experience we can only show the path through and that was you know that uh, i'd say that this was certainly the more aggressive path but coming up all the way to test the 20 minute exponential and the 10 simple moon average which we talked about um and a perfect uh, perfect wick up to them so far and so far selling off which tells me that this is being respected which is concerning to say the least because a 10 simple is a lower period crossing below a higher period of the 21 which is typically some nice you know some uh, some nice algo uh, inputs and as they do cross each other it would it would imply that the algo selling will actually intensify a little bit so here's the thing you know this is why i keep on saying that overall for the for the big big for the big picture this whole piece, this whole phase of the market cycle could take a very, 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 very long time. Now, with that said, though, with that said, and taking this one step further from the daily, if the if this next monthly can close above the 21 exponential moving average right here at 5250, I am I would be bullish. I would know it's it's not even being bearish or neutral. It's about being bullish after that for the big picture. At that point in time, I basically cease a lot of my lower time frame trading activities and just hold, just become a hodler for a little bit uh, in a bull market. Being a hodler, not the not not the worst idea. So that's what I'm kind of looking at right over here. Uh, and the fact that we are respecting it right now would suggest that you know, I mean, it's 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 way too early in this month to say that we're respecting it. I mean, shit, it's the fucking second day of April. But my point is, is that as long as we're living below it, uh, that will be a concern from the very high time frame picture. So again, separating all the time frames, the lower time frames, the medium time frames, the high time frames, and the, and, and, and the big picture macro time frames. Uh, that's kind of what I have my eyes on in this guy right here. But of course, remember, if we do close above, I do become bullish. Bullish, just like you saw in 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin regained the 21 exponential moving average right here, that was a perfect timing of the upwards momentum, the opportunity cost, and everything involved from $300 all the way to $20,000 price for Bitcoin. Very, 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 very impressive. And again, from my experience in trading uh, equity options on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, Arc, I would use the 21 exponential moving average on the monthly to judge if a stock, if an equity was you know, essentially bullish or bearish. Uh, you know, if, if we're above, we're generally bullish. If we're, if we're below, we're generally bearish. And right now, we are still even below. So from the bigger, bigger picture, uh, that is something that I want to have in mind. So, you know, lower time frames, however, you know, that's that's a whole different, this is a whole different beast right now. I would be looking for a pullback to 4,600 over the next day or so. Uh, you know, the timing of that, again, an, unre an, an unreliable thing. What's more important is the reaction around that area. So I do have, I have put in a couple horizontals right here. Oh, oops, uh, wrong chart. Let's go back to BitMexico. Yeah, put a couple horizontals right here, right at the uh, 4,600 level, which is meeting up with this, uh, uh, with the 200 simple and 200 exponential moving average. So, it, it, you know, if Bitcoin comes back down around there, I would imagine that it probably does try to bounce on first pass. The question is, where do we close the day out? Uh, as uh, more importantly, I would be more comfortable with saying that Bitcoin's going to likely come back and test here. So, uh, hopefully I can get this video out soon enough. Um, you know, if you are looking to scalp, there's plenty of plays to be made right now. Uh, like I said, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not playing that right now on my main account and and, and both my streamer account. I'm actually doing the same shit on both of them uh, with priority to my main account, of course. But I'm really waiting for the daily as, you know, if we do close the daily above, I will hold this long position because very, 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 very likely that we do get another test, you know, around that 49, maybe 5,000 level. And, uh and at that point, you know, it's, I'd, I'd rather keep an open mind. I will be, you know, I'll hold that long as long as we're essentially above the 200 simple. So, again, to kind of like to kind of um, talk about this trade, because, I, you know, a lot of people have been interested in this trade. And, uh, and, and you know, I suppose for good reason, because not I mean, not because, you know, it's just it, it seems to work out. But it, it came about at a time when my opinion was directly in, in contradiction to 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 my technical analysis. My technical analysis said, hey, get long. My opinion said, I don't want to be long. But that was right over here. And my God, what's up on Twitch, man? Good to meet you. As always, a pleasure to uh, to meet new people on Twitch. 
and thank you for joining on them, man. Because uh, because Twitch just it's it makes me so fucking happy when people join on Twitch, man. It's uh it's it's like this beautiful exclusive community. But uh but anyways, <clears throat> so I took the position right here at about thirty nine thirty when we kind of had this reaction off this uh, support trend line that uh, that Bitcoin had been running up for the past uh, couple months since middle of February, and I was gonna and basically Bitcoin never really had a major pullback after that. At first, I used four thousand to manage risk upon Bitcoin. You know, tested it a couple times, rallied off that. Then we created another support trend line right around 4040. Then Bitcoin came back, retested that once and twice, right off that. So again, it's just we're just walking it up. And this is how uh, this is typically how my more long term positions are born from. So to kind of relate these ideas and talk about just how it went through in general, I hope is helpful because, again, my opinion over here was not bullish. My opinion was not here was not bullish over here. But from a technical analysis standpoint, uh, once I saw this level get taken out at 3930, it was time it was time to put on a long position and then as we got walked up you know keep on keeping the position even though my opinion is contradictory towards it and this is exactly what i mean by saying i don't trade my opinion i trade technical analysis and now i'll be now i've moved that up after a major move like this and it'll be right around 4600 ish area as long as bitcoin is closing dailies and really nothing less than that maybe i could make the decision on a 12 hour but but it, but a daily would do it um a daily would be more comfortable as long as Bitcoin is above the 200 simple and 200 exponential. I do not get rid of that position. And again, this is how those kind of longer term positions, uh, you know, come about. Similar to my short from 6300 right over here, or sorry, it was right over. I didn't get the I didn't get the actual top of 65, but I got 63 right here. Um, you know, there's not really it's just it's just walking it down again. You know, we broke we then we broke six thousand, then I just moved my stop loss to there, then we broke this area right over here, then I moved my stop loss to fifty six, and then just kept kept on getting walked down and down and down until I actually held it all the way till expiration, which was last week right here. So it actually worked out perfectly with the way that I did it on those features. And again, this is not like any sort of that that is not any sort of technical analysis skill. That was mainly just luck. To be very clear, I don't want people thinking that like um, that like I had that pre-planned. No, I was just I was just I was just adhering to very simple rules, going all the way down, and then just adjusting as it goes on. And it just so happened that my short position expired literally, <laughs> literally right here on Friday. Well, it was Friday the 29th or the 30th? What whatever, what, whatever it was is right over here. And then uh, and then Bitcoin just takes up on onwards and after, and and, and upwards after that as my uh, as as my long position just takes over. Um, so again. Like I said, not something you know, not something that was pre-planned, but uh, but hey, that is how that is why I always say you don't necessarily have to have everything pre-planned to begin with, or have this like very intricate, you know, deciding factors because because if you do the small things right, it'll carry on over into the big things, and that's my big point right now. Um, anyways, okay, so we're so we're doing all this. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday, but I do want to cover it once again. Just another kind of thing that was making me a little bit more leaning to the, towards the upside yesterday, which was looking at the looking at the weekly uh, Trollinger bands, which we have very obviously both open and closed our first weekly dildo above the median uh, moving average right here, the skid mark colored twenty simple moving average, which was retested last week perfectly and then rallied off of, and we both open and closed our first weekly dildo, dildo above that since really the turnaround in twenty seventeen. 2018 right over here and uh and that typically does insinuate a test towards the upside resistance of this now the upside resistance of this sorry the the, the top troll in japan is all the way at 4400 so there will be some downwards pressure on this right now there are some competing competitive factors. We have the 200 simple and 200 exponential, which are going to act like magnets. And then this is also going to come into play as well. The question is, do we use the top Trollinger band to base off of, or do we get pushed right back in below the Trollinger band as that's going to be absolutely critical. So <clears throat> I think this really brings up my next, you know, my next topic and is Am I, would I still be saying that, would I, would I still say that the low for Bitcoin is not in? I'd say that my tune is drastically going to change if we can, if we can both open and close a weekly above the 200 exponential, which is all the way at 4,100, which looks pretty fucking likely. Um, that would drastically change my tune. But remember, the monthly still has not been taken out. And that is my biggest one for myself. Of course, if you want to be super traditional, you'd be looking at the 6,000 level right over here. Bitcoin breaks back above that area. Then no reason to be bearish at all whatsoever, um, at, le at least from a technical analysis standpoint. But like I said, you're probably going to know, you're probably going to have indicators beforehand um so here's the thing you know it's 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 a long-term game like please do not get it do not do not get lost up do or sorry do not get caught up in the minutia thinking that uh you know one day one day changes the market no it's 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 prolonged effort 
over months. And really my point is that this whole, f this whole phase can take a very long time. So while I am talking about a lot of bullish things right now, please understand that my trigger for changing overall into the higher timeframes is very quite clear. 5,200, or sorry, well, first things first, need to see an open and close above the uh, weekly 200 uh, exponential moving average, which is at 4,100. If we can close this next weekly uh, dildo above the top band on the Trollingers, uh, which is uh, 4,430 right now, that would look good as well. Look for look good for some more continuation. It would drastically change my tune, and I'd probably be, you know, it would it, it insinuate that I'm holding this long for a longer time. Um, but it's at 5,200 level right around the monthly 21 exponential moving average that I really have a keen eye on as, uh, as long as Bitcoin's below that, it is still a question mark in the back of my mind. And, uh, and I'd rather be defensive more than anything. And that's my whole point is that I would like to get out of this long, you know, if we do have another move up, um, 5,000 probably looks like a good idea for me. Um, again, I won't, I actually won't sell at the spot position. What I'll do is probably do it with options. Um, as I feel more comfortable doing that anyway. So while we're on here on the weekly, yeah, if, if, you know, if the weekly can close above this, this top trolling band, that would also incite some more continuation as well. Remember this is coming in all the way at uh, 44 29. So, uh, has plenty of room and Bitcoin actually selling down a little bit right now. Let's see if we can get that test of 4,600 as that would, you know, if Bitcoin does, I would imagine that the first pounds for first pass probably does bounce it. Uh, the question is how we end the day though. That's going to be the big Big news. Uh, let's go over to the two week total time frame as well, as that is very important. As uh, the two week total time frame was kind of giving us um, giving us hints on Sunday as well. That's saying, or sorry, I mean, this was something that we were talking about all last week, but we got our first two week total opening and closing above this red 10 moon average right here. Again, something that Bitcoin hasn't done in well over a year. And after that, having a full move up to test this cross right over here, the green 55 and the, and the yellow 21 expansion moving average, which are still gaining divergence waves each other. And look at this, they are resisting price action. So we are seeing some pretty massive massive uh moving averages still rejecting price action even with this nice move up or what would look like or what does look like a nice move up on the lower time frames on the higher time frames we are still getting rejected by some pretty you know some pretty gnarly areas but that's to be expected that's actually quite that's actually to be expected on the first pass if we come back up there and you know st and grind this area out then that's going to start to look like a consolidation at resistance, which would, you know, likely incite or, 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 or sorry, that that would imply a uh, bullish break. But of course, you know, that's well and far away right now. We're five hundred dollars off from the high. That's not the best sign of all time. Uh, immediately giving up 10 percent of your rally. Mm. You're lucky is 26%, so fair enough. There you go. But now we are starting to switch some things around uh, as this whole formation has rallied up. I mean, shit, uh, it's got to be, I mean, we uh, from bottom to wick, 62%. Now that's impressive. That That's that's a lot more impress impressive than what we had before. Mm, but, you know, you do see kind of a similar setup here in uh, 2014, 2015. I don't want to go over this too much because it's going to incite the fractal gods, which I don't put too much weight on. But uh, but we did come up and, and pop up and test the 21 during that period and then immediately fall on over. So just something to be aware of. Again, this is why I covered the low time frames and the high time frames equally, because uh, it's very important to understand what the, you know, what those different outlooks look like and where the actual pivot points do indeed lie. Um, let's go check out. We looked, did we look at the monthly enough already? Yeah, let's actually stay on here for the monthly for a second, because uh, I forgot to cover something yesterday. And I, and I really do apologize about this. I typically do this each and every time that we get a new monthly. And uh, let's look at the monthly also. Just, we got monthly stokes are getting tired down here. Uh, we've been in this more critical zone since December of 2018, so spent about four four months here now. Um, can certainly spend some more time in here. Um, you know, I mean, I mean even, even if this thing were to turn around right now, it'd still take probably another four or five months to get out of the critical zone. But we do also do see the monthly coming back up, testing or wanting to test the neutral zone, which is also going to likely incite a test of this uh, of this exponential right here, which we have been away from for so fucking long. I mean, shit, man, look at the you know. Realistically. <sighs> It's 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 likely to pop back and uh, and test it. I mean, you can kind of see a very similar thing from 2014, 2015 as well. The second that the second that the RSI got back above this exponential, that was your bull market on right timing timing this area right here. Actually, one dildo before the big massive uh, the big high volumizer dildo nader, uh, bringing you all the way up from. I mean, this one about a time to you from 250 to 20,000. That is almost 100x on Bitcoin, which is. Um, Quite impressive. Uh, monthly jewel is not going to be too reliable. I mean, monthly jewel technically, you know, wants to bounce from this area, but I, I don't put too much weight on that either. Which way? Uh, more importantly, the reason why I came over to this time frame once again is to look at the accumulation distribution, the net delta indicator, which is going to be showing up right over here. And we have oh, 
wait a second. Hold on. Um, th th this is very concerning. Um, I'm, uh, let's, let's go over to BLX. Okay. BLX doesn't get it right. That's yeah. They, uh, they have a bad volume feed. Yeah. Go, go, gotta go to Bitstamp. Um, this is very concerning right here because we actually have once again, gotten a negative slope on this indicator, which I, I is not a good sign. Um, it was, wow. I'm, I'm very shocked to see that it's actually, that it actually did not tick up on this last, uh, on this last one. That's very bizarre. I, I'd have to look at this some more, but uh, but you, but basically, if you're not familiar with this indicator, it basically I, I basically only care about the slope on this, and right now it actually has a negative slope once again. Last month it was positive slope as we hadn't gotten this new tick on it; it was just coming up, which you know was kind of suggesting some more upside as well. Uh, right now it's actually coming down, which is concerning. Again, I you know when talking about the major market structure and in, in, in major market cycle, I'm not I'm still not convinced that Bitcoin's flip to bullish. Uh, you know, this move quite impressive, don't get me wrong, but it does look to me like it wants to pop back down to fifty to forty six right now. Um, and that's gonna be the real test. Does forty six hold or not? If forty six gives way immediately, that's that's not going to be a good sign, but you know, a long day left to go. So again, this one I only care about on a daily total closing basis, even though I'm looking at an hourly right now. Uh, the hourly did have a massive, massive shooting star wick right over here. So I'd imagine that that probably does have some more, uh, some more fall throughs for the downside. But you see hourly stokes turning around, and uh, sorry, hourly, hourly is making a nice formation right here. So if you do see it break this rising trend line, and that is so bizarre. Why does it keep on adding alerts whenever I do that? Um, but if you do see it break this trend line, that would be a good signal for some more downside, some more, some more like actual sustained downside. Uh, hourly RSI going to be getting all kinds of high. Holy moly, man! I haven't seen it this high in a long time. Ninety-seven, uh, not, almost ninety-eight on an hourly. That's pretty damn. Usually, you, very rarely do you see do you see it get that high. Um, daily RSI. I mean, I mean, the you know people are going to be saying it's the same thing, and this is where I really don't want to get caught in both the games. But it's the same thing as when as when the permable we're saying, bro, RSI is at a is at an eight point seven eight. You know what that means? We gotta go up right now, bro. This baby's going moon. Well, I mean that that happened right here, and Bitcoin literally went from from about thirty eight hundred to thirty one hundred uh, over the next week week or two. Even though the RSI was too low, well, same thing right over here. Even though that the RSI is quite high, uh, I still wouldn't. I mean, we haven't seen this level in RSI since. Holy shit, man. Um, yeah, December 2017, once again, uh, you know, it, it could still crawl its way upwards and onwards. So I want to, I really do want to offer up both views here, as I believe that that's incredibly important. Because where this next daily ends, and of course the next weekly as well, is going to really, 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 really be important. We got the move from the monthly perspective. So here's the thing is we got the move from the monthly perspective, or at least what I would have, you know, the maximum of what I would have looked for, a test of the 21 exponential just fully, which quite impressive, don't get me wrong. But now it's gonna be up to the lower time frames to kind of build upon this. And really what you wanna see, if you are bullish, you wanna see this 4,600 level hold here and you wanna see like a nice, I don't know, probably like a nice uh, flag out consolidation and then try again higher towards this, uh, toward, towards 5,000 once again. That would be incredibly constructive. That would be in very impressive. And that would be where I really start saying, okay, I know I still gotta wait for that 21 exponential, but holy shit, man, this is getting really fucking hard now. This is getting really hard. So basically because I'd want to, you know, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd want to enter in ahead of that. But of course, again, this is why trade technical analysis, not my opinion. Um, by the same token, if we lose the daily 200 simple and 200 exponential immediately, then it becomes more of a, it becomes more of a game of, okay, uh, was that, you know, what was that the area to look for or not? Anyways, um, okay, got all of that. Let's go talk about uh, let's go talk about CMEs. How they're looking right now? Um, CMEs, CMEs actually coming all the way up to test the two hundred simple. Uh, Jesus Christ, man, they got way up there. Yeah, fifty one. Uh, CMEs look different, man. CMEs look different. Uh, daily, daily Stokes and these guys are actually building up and consolidating this area right here and, and following this this trend line to the upside. So CMEs do want to do do want more. If I'm looking at CMEs, that's what I'd say. Uh, CME uh, RSI breaking out of this formation right here. Let's see if we actually hit the measure move on it let's just let's do this out very very poor poorly done on my part and yeah about hit it right now again a long day left to go so we'll have to see how this one actually ends but 
Uh, but but uh, but around that area is good enough and kind of telling us that uh, eh, probably has played this move more than likely. Again, verified on the lower time frames, just kind of going on the higher time frames now. Um, I'm curious what the weekly looks like for CMEs. Yes, yeah, CMEs are going to be well above the 20-month exponential, which it has never gotten. I mean, this is more of a testament to the fact that it just hasn't been around for that long. But technically, it's never. It's actually never really even uh, closed one above. Or I suppose we have one closer right, right over here. So we don't have an open and close above, which is certainly more important. If I was going out the CMEs, I mean, technically, 50, I suppose 5,800. If, if, 52, if 52 gets uh, taken out, I become bullish, but technically speaking, I'd be looking for a move towards, uh, towards 58. Fair enough. Not really too much else to look at on CMEs. Maybe go down to a lower time frame. Have the same nasty wick right over here. Hourly Stokes crossing down as well. Uh, is the hourly jewel actually setting up? Uh, yeah, hourly jewel is setting up right now. So jewel says, uh, jewel says probably, you know, look for a scalp. Of course, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Um, yeah, hourly RSI, not really telling us. It's just super high. Doesn't, but that doesn't mean anything to me, man. That thing can stay up there for a long, 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 long time. Uh, let's go check out uh, GBDC. GBDC closed in a day at its highs, just like kind of like we spoke about yesterday. It was likely to come back and test this five dollar region. We got that. I'd imagine that we're probably gonna have a gap up open uh, for today. Probably reach up towards this next gap right over here, five twenty five ish area, uh, five and a quarter. If things get a little more crazy, I'd be looking for a full move into this into this zone right over here, prior high at about five seventy. Um, but it looks to me like we are seeing divergence between, it looks to me like we are seeing divergence between spot and GBDC. GBDC is not leading. It has not led this move. Spot has, and that's a very important distinction to make because this is the first time we've really seen this in a very long time. And, uh, and when I talk about all these things, you know, obviously, obviously when I, you know, when I cover these sorts of things, they are going to be lagging in nature. The real skill though, is to recognize when it's actually changed around and then make the fucking change and then make the fucking change. Cause the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So so a trend that had been going on for a year, for a few year, for a year long straight, uh, now in my opinion, you know, being broken, uh, I don't see GBTC as a as a leader anymore. I see it as a follower, and uh, and more importantly, <clears throat> you know, this this is the right time to actually confirm this. We do not have, we are not seeing the same things right now. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go check out. Um I'm curious how the I'm curious how the shit coins are doing right now. Let's go check out uh, Mr. Buterall. Where's Mr. Buterall? There you are. Yeah, 152. So yeah, getting that move toward, towards 150. Uh, yeah, we got the full move towards 156. Nicely done right there. I'd imagine that Bitcoin has another leg up. You're going to see that move towards uh, 161 and a half, 162. But again, the key critical point was right here was exactly what we spoke about yesterday night. Once you take out 147 and a half, quick move towards this area right here, 155, 155-ish area. Now selling down a little bit as well, uh, but gonna you know just gonna do whatever the you know whatever the rest of the majors do. Essentially, Mr. Buto has not been leading. Uh, he's been a follower as well. Uh, Daily Stokes are up. Fair enough. Uh, Daily RSI reaching for the bullish control zone. This looks mm, okay. Uh, certainly more on the bullish side. It was switching around yesterday, as we said. Uh, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. Or actually, what I also should say is, uh, I would look. You know, if, if Mr. Buterall did pop back down to 147 and a half, I'd look for this area to be defended. If this area does give way, that's when I change around my. You, you know, that uh, that's when this starts to look a lot more nasty and uh, and would take on a more bearish tone. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin, Mrs. Litecoin breaking through, breaking through. And again, this is why I have that rule. You can look at all of the bearish things. You can say that we have bearish divergence. You can see that the Stokes are coming down. You can say that. Uh, what, did the jewel set up? Ooh, Jewel is still in a setup. Still going to take a few more days, but um, a couple more days, I'd say. But it actually might sell up for a sell signal, although I probably wouldn't take that. I probably wouldn't take that. At, you know, if, if, if we take out this 63 and a half level and confirm this next daily dodo above there, which looks pretty fucking likely, I wouldn't be looking to. I'd be looking for long positions, man, not short. And more importantly, uh, this is why I have that rule. Whenever you have a golden cross, the green 50 exponential and the purple 200 exponential, and I'm above uh, at the very least the 21 exponential. But I mean, even you know all of these uh, all these guys right here, I don't short. I don't. I don't go. I don't trade against that. And same for same same thing for the death cross as well. I mean, it goes both ways. Uh, but this one, obviously, the more bullish of them. And really, realistically speaking, from from Mrs. Litecoin's perspective, I mean, yeah, we just kind of hit our prior high right here. Uh, I'd be looking for this one to move higher. I mean, it's, you know, we have daily Stokes having a fresh cross up, although in the more critical zone, uh, we have daily RSI 
uh, reaching up once again, going to be creating some divergences, but still need to confirm a local high, which we will not be doing today unless if this thing like ends below 63, uh, which I don't think is quite likely right now. And, uh, and overall, I mean, we could draw this back in again, you know, the top side of the ascending, uh, the ascending broadening wedge, which probably still does get respected, but look at this, you know, it's rising over time. So where it gets respected is going to be again, right around this. Yeah. 74, $75 region, which is kind of what I'm looking at. Um, I don't think that misses like when stops here. Uh, if I were just looking at Mrs. Likewin, I'd say uh, we're probably moving higher. And that, you know, that would obviously go for Bitcoin as well. Um, and that probably also come in, come into confluence with a, uh, with a closure, with the daily close above, uh, 4,600, the daily 200 simple intro and exponential, which again, putting all these pieces together, these are the two that are, that are leading right now, which I put the most weight on. Um, let's go check out the other top shit coins. We got Cardano over here. Card. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So the L coins taking on the chin again. We spoke about this yesterday, how Cardano was going to, you know, likely come back down to about 1500. We got that move and actually pretty damn good reaction off there. I'm going to move this, uh, move this support up. Um, Still, though, I, I do think that this probably has, you know, still wants to come back down and consolidate lower, uh, even though this was bought up pretty aggressively. There's some there's still some nasty bearish divergence on this to play out. Uh, Daily Stokes going to be crossing down as well. Yep. Fresh cross down uh, <clears throat> as volume kind of tails off uh, 1750, the big resistance to hold. And again, it looks to me like the altcoins don't want to uh, join in on the fun, which is not the best sign. It's really not the best sign. Uh, let's go over and check out, uh, do I have Bcash over here? What the, f oh yeah. Uh, do I have Bcash over here? No, I have BNB coin over here. BNB coin taking another leg up as well. And Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, this this one would have got me, but this one, this one also looking like the was the most bullish of the bunch, uh, funnily enough. We are going to see daily setup for a sell, sell signal on the jewel, but you know, would I be taking that after a major breakout like this? Probably not. Uh, I don't really see anything in the way of, I mean, shit, at, the, at this point, 20 bucks, 22 bucks. Uh, I, I don't really see anything great, you know, I mean, maybe if you wanted to really make an argument for this, maybe we still respect this, this rising trend line right here by end of day, possible, uh, possible, but, uh, with the rest of the market looking strong, BNB this BNB is one of the strong all the way through. So he's just going to get stronger. Um, and if he really does want to break this area, which to me this looks like a clean break right now, I'd be looking for uh, twenty to twenty two bucks. Actually, sounds a little bit crazy right now, but uh, again, not going to happen like at the snap of a fucking fingers. But over time, and this is still, I, I believe, still going to be contingent upon the other majors. Uh, Zcash. Uh, broke its resistance uh, yesterday that we saw and m working its way up to our next resistance right around uh, 66 bucks. Nothing crazy there. Or, I mean, I suppose a little bit higher than that. Did we get a full wick up to this area? This one's hard to judge because this nasty wick down here. Um, yeah, we did. I'd imagine probably sells off on first pass, but I'd, I'd want to see uh, 62 bucks uh, act as support if it is going to be support. Uh, Bcash making its way up to our next resistance right around uh, 190. Or, I mean, really, I'd want to see like a move towards 200, I believe it was. Yeah, right here. Did we get that? Uh, nope. We got to 190 even. Same thing here, though. Um, Daily Soaks are going to be crossing down, so... You know, need to, you know, as for, for this one to kind of remain in its more bullish posture and need to see it, uh, need to see it defend 170. As long as it's above there, I would run with that assumption. <clears throat> uh, Tron Cash joining the, joining the action as well. In fact, not just hitting my target of uh, two and a half cent yesterday, but actually exploding above that. Now resolving this consolidation to the upside. Uh, I would say that, yes, we are at our next resistance right here, but probably does want to work its way higher. Do you see daily Stokes looking strong? Do you, do you see daily RSI looking looking fine as well? And this is a nice pattern being resolved to the upside. I mean, technically, there is a measured move to be made on this. Uh, nice little, do you want to call it a falling wedge? I suppose you could. Yeah, it'd be, be all the way up to the 377 at about uh, 3.2 cents. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Neo Cash, Neo Cash getting towards our $11 target, or actually actually uh, getting above it. I think that this one um, this one is respecting the 200 simple right now. I'd imagine that we probably do get held here by end of day. Uh, but same thing over here. You know, do we close above or below it by end of day? That's going to be the real question. If we close above it, well, then I'll be looking for that next move towards likely this area around 12:30. Uh, sorry, let's actually get a get get a nice uh, horizontal going on right right over here about 12:30 right over here. Um, if it ends below, then then becomes then I'd want to see uh, 1040 1040 active support. If that one fails, then we got something new to consider. But for right now, 
Uh, that's what I'd be thinking. Uh, EOS Cash actually hitting our our 450-ish area. I think I was wrong in this one because I did call a top at 450. That did not happen. We came well. We well we did initially come back down. This area was defended extremely well. What did I say that about? I'd have to go back. I'd imagine that's probably what I did say. I probably I probably was looking for a test back down to uh, four dollars and eight cents. But um, no, did I get that right over here? And then and then it was right over here. Oh, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter now. Jesus Christ, man, the move's fucking over. Um, that's just a bunch of ego shit talking, trying to be right about a move. Anyways, uh, we do have this formation being resolved to the upside. Let's see let's see where that would kind of imply as we are kind of uh, yeah we are we are living above it right now. So. If this thing does really want to break, I mean, we are at a major resistance, right? This is the same consolidation coming all the way back from uh, August 2018. Uh, if this area can get broken, I mean, I'm, you know, yeah, there, there, there are targets to the upside on this, but I, I don't really, I start, I don't really think in that way anymore. I start thinking in the way of just I would rather be, I'd ra you know, I'd much, I'd much rather be long. Uh, keep in mind though, uh, this next resistance would be, would likely be respected just because we do have this rising trend line coming in right around here, kind of meeting up with it as well. In fact, still, you know, don't say I said this, but it is kind of making a rising channel uh, still, something like this. There you go. <clears throat> Let's go check out uh, Ripple Me Nipples Cash and taking a look up as well. Again, ground grinding this uh, grinding this uh, thirty one and a half cent resistance right here. And did we hit my target of thirty three and a half cent? Nope, not yet. But getting close, getting damn close. And my fucking drawings just do not want to save. But right over here is what I'd be looking towards. I mean, pretty pretty damn close. I think that this one does does reach for it overall. Uh, we do have mm, we do have some to be aware of right here as well, though on the RSI. But fair enough for now. Uh, for, uh, for now, the big news is that you actually broke the C upside. I'd, I'd be looking for this one. To, this one do have more uh, daily Stokes up, daily RSI up. You know, we spoke about this yesterday. This one, you know, we get, we got we got the retest of twenty nine and a half cent right here. Then worked its way up, test some supports, now test some resistances, and well, the re the resistance actually broke this time, or it looks like it wants to break. I mean, you know, it's still a long day left to go, but uh, it's gonna take some gonna take some pretty nasty selling for uh, for this one to come back down. Possible, definitely possible, but. Yeah, I'd, I'd still be looking for some upside here. Uh, sh uh, Monero Cash, what do we got on this guy? Holy fucking moly. Yeah, this one's the true winner. Uh, breaking out of this $57 region right here and then straight upwards and onwards. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Let's put in a horizontal right there. Yeah, I'd imagine that this is going to be your next big resistance right around the 200 simple and 200 exponential. Uh, but overall, Mon well, Monero does look interesting, right? Like, look at the volume signature on this. So kind of crawling its way down. Uh, so do we put in some sort of formation here? Maybe. That's possible. That actually is a legitimate possibility. Uh, I would keep an eye on this. That's a pretty aggressive sell-off from the 200 simple and 200 exponential. Uh, of course, if it does close above this area, I'd be I would be looking for a test higher towards uh, 81 and a half bucks. But uh, but right now we're living well below it. And if we do and if we do close below it, I'd be looking for another test probably into this region right here. And you really don't want to see this region let go uh, right around uh, 58 and a, 58 and a half. Uh, let's go check out Stellar Cash. Uh, Stellar Cash getting to that towards uh, towards our prior high. We spoke about this yesterday as well. Uh, likely to get back to eleven and a half cents. This one actually got a little bit more than that, eleven point uh, eleven and three quarters. But again, same thing here. You know, the rest of the market looking strong. Uh, right at a major resistance now. Uh, how we close this day out is going to be absolutely critical. If we can close above this about eleven and a half cent region right here, I would be looking for this to to ultimately test the twelve and a half cent region. But keep in mind that is of great importance as well because we have this trend line originating all the way back from. Um, uh, Jesus Christ, December 2017, holding up this first major consolidation, which broke in in uh, in 2018 December. And if we were to come back and retest this area again, 12 and a half cents, imagine it probably does sell on the first pass as well. So I think that covers up all of the ones that I want to talk about. Let's go check out uh, traditional markets closing the day extremely well. And same thing here. I mean, I'm. <sighs> I'm not, you know, it's, it, we had a golden cross, green 50, purple 200, above all major moving averages. I'm not bearish on anything that looks like that. Uh, you know, I, technically, I, I guess I'd have a target of around two, 287, 288. But, uh, I mean, now there's like a massive gap down around 282 and a half. But hey, same thing here, man. I'm not... Uh, I'm not bearish anything that looks like this. I mean, you, you know, if you if you break back down below what is this 280 and a half, then yeah, uh, you know, I'd be looking for a move to test a 275, 276. But right now, that's that's not the direction. Uh, Daily Stokes just had a fresh cross up. They look good to me. Daily RSI just pop back down to the neutral zone. Beautiful move up up above that, back up uh, above the uh, the exponential. Very good. Very fucking good. 
Um, so yeah, back on to Mr. Bitcoin. We'll wrap this bitch up now. Of course, I want to. I want you. Uh, I want you separate. You know, all the different time frames as much as possible. Lower time frames do look like they want to come back down, test this blue box territory around the 200 simple 200 exponential between 45.50 and 4600. Um, we do have our hourly stocks turning around as well. We do see our hourly. You know, hourly just looks like it wants to cool off to me and major, major, major uh, shooting star dildo right here with a little bit of fall through so far and extremely heavy volume. In fact, this hourly dildo almost doing three quarters of a billion in one in a one hour time frame. That's very impressive, extremely impressive. Um, <clears throat> if we go over, if we go over to the four hour, four hour, eh, not really telling us anything unique. It's really the daily. It's the next time frame that I want to be aware of. Uh, where the daily closes in relation to the 200 simple and 200 exponential is absolutely critical. Do we close above it? I hold longs. If we close below it, I close longs. It's that simple. Or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna close them, but what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm, I'm gonna do it with options where uh, where I put it, probably put on a spread to cover my to cover my spot long position. Um, of course, the higher time frames like the weekly and the monthly that's not really relevant right now because it's so far away. We already hit those targets essentially on the weekly and the monthly. The weekly uh, moving averages being tested right here as they cross. The monthly moving averages being tested right here as they cross as well. Not really shown as uh, uh, you know best on on Bitmex. You got to go to Bitstamp for that. But for now. You know that uh, that was the move in the morning. Obviously, I wasn't I wasn't streaming. I wasn't even I wasn't even really. I mean, what you know when this thing uh, when we were looking at this at this thing yesterday and saying ah it looks kind of bullish or it looks pretty fucking bullish. Um,